Hey, what's going on guys? Jackson here. Welcome back to a new video. The American Express Platinum Card has been a beloved travel card of very big credit card enthusiasts. However, with them raising their annual fee to $695 a year, do the new benefits outweigh the cost? Today, we're gonna hopefully answer that question for you. If you guys haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and hit the like button as it really does help out the channel. So starting off with the first benefit, and that is the airline travel credit. And I know we've all liked and hated this credit sometimes because you used to be able to use gift cards for it, but American Express has pretty much locked this one down. Uh, now you can really only use it for uh, airfare, for, for check bags, and incidental fees is what they really want it for you to use. There are a couple hacks you can do to get uh, use it on plane tickets, but they're, they're very hit or miss. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and if you go in Flyer Talk, uh, there are some ways that you can find it there. I'm gonna value this credit at around $150 because I feel like 75% of the value is good enough. If you're gonna be using getting this card, you're gonna have some reason to uh, travel. And if you are traveling, typically maybe you're checking a bag. You can also use it for seat upgrades, uh, not officially, but I've never had a problem using it for seat upgrades in the past. So I do think you could get around 75% uh, of the value of this credit. The second credit is the $100 Saks credit. Uh, I really don't like this one. It's, it's just, Pretty stupid in my opinion, especially that they split it up into two six months periods. Um, Fifty dollars is very hard to find something on their site for for around that price. I usually just buy like some wallet or some sort, and then just sell it on eBay or Amazon or, or FBA or uh, Mercari. Um, I'm going to value this at maybe the twenty five dollars, just because I, I personally don't get enough value from this credit to justify uh, spending a hundred dollars on anything. The next benefit is the $200 Uber credit, and this is split up monthly, uh, except in December, where you do get, I think it's $25 instead of the 15. Um, this is an okay credit. Uh, it's great for Uber rides, especially now that they do have the, the Uber Pass. Uh, that does save a little bit on the additional costs. Um, but for Uber Eats, I feel like this credit has really started to go downhill just because Uber Eats has upped the price of everything on their app significantly. I really only use this for Chipotle. Uh, and going to Chipotle directly, uh, I think a, 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 ch a chicken bowl is like $8 and 10 cents where I live, rather than if you go on the app, it's 925 uh, inside of Uber Eats. So I'm only gonna credit this around $150 because I think you are paying a little bit of a premium you know, to, to use the app and to use the service. And otherwise I wouldn't use Uber Eats anything. Otherwise I don't, I don't really take a lot of Ubers um, but if you if you do use Uber and you use it consistently every month and you travel for work, this could be a great benefit. And the next one on the list is the global TSA pre-check. And I really like this credit. Uh, I have absolutely no problem using this. It is once every four years and I was gonna get TSA pre-check anyway, or I got global entry. Um, but actually, ironically, I get global entry through work for free, so I don't really have to worry about this credit. Um, but for other people, I am gonna value this at 100% because I think this is a very valuable credit. If you already have other premium credit cards, you may be doubling up on this fee, but you can always ask a friend or a family member if they want this credit and maybe they could you know, kick you back a couple bucks or so. But I think this is a very worthwhile credit. I will be valuing this at the full percentage. The next credit on the list is the $200 hotel credit, and I am pretty disappointed with this credit. Uh, I don't like that you have to use it with their hotel collection or find hotels and resorts. It's very limited. I wish it was just any hotel uh, on American Express Travel's website, but uh, I understand that they're pretty much anticipating people not to use this credit and yet charge you for the additional benefits. Um, and so I, I probably value this at, at maybe $100. I, I just don't know if I would really use it. Uh, I don't really stay at nice places when I do travel. I don't travel a whole lot, but when I do, um, I, I'm usually not staying at like, you know, Waldorf Astoria's or, or uh, you know, the Ritz Carlton where I'm spending $800 a night. Uh, and to get $200 off 800 night stay and you're staying for like a week, that just doesn't make mathematical sense to me. I'd rather stay at somewhere that's like, you know, $150 a night. Uh, so I think this is a total drop ball American Express, but you can see they're targeting to their demographic. They want to get higher income people in there who are going to be going on business travel and spending this additional uh, income on nicer stays. The next credit is the $240 entertainment credit. I This is the biggest disappointment out of all of them, uh, even more so than the hotel credit one, but uh, essentially this only works in $20 a month increments, and it only works for a select service of uh, sites, so uh, Peacock and XM Radio and Audible, the New York Times I think is the other one. 
Um, I'm, I'm very disappointed in this. I wish they would just open this up to every streaming service, but obviously I think American Express is partnering with these sites and saying, we will give you free users if you just don't charge them for anything. Uh, and then they're the ones footing the bill uh, for using this, this credit. And I'm sure they're gonna get a lot of pushback and try to partner with additional sites, but I don't think it's actually American Express paying for this fee. I think it's the actual streaming services themselves who are agreeing to allow their customer base to, to uh, you know, use their service. I do use Audible, so this is pretty useful for me, but I do wish it would open up to stuff like uh, YouTube Premium or um, any other streaming service like YouTube TV, Spotify, uh, Apple Music, any of those would be great alternatives. Just as it sits right now, it's way too restrictive, and I see American Express really having to revamp this credit if people are expected to stay. Next, we come to the $300 Equinox credit, and I value this at zero. Uh, I think this is stupid for American Express to include this, again, just like the entertainment credit. I don't think it's American Express paying for this credit. Um, I think it's, uh, like I mentioned, the e Equinox or another service offering to pay a certain percentage of, of the bill and then they just give the credit out for free and say you're getting $300 in value when you're really not getting anything in value because Equinox costs an, an arm and a leg a month and so you're really only getting about a 20% discount per month uh, on everything and it's only available in select cities. Where I live, there is no Equinox. I'd have to drive like five hours away to Chicago in order to use an Equinox gym. So, so this is totally a, uh, a failure in my opinion, but American Express knew that. They knew that not everyone would, would use this credit, um, and so they're prepared for the kickback of, of people not being happy with it. Um, so I value this at zero. Uh, moving on to the next one. Next, we have the $179 clear credit. Um, I, I, don't, I don't really value this. I'm sure other people would disagree that they like this. I'm gonna value this at zero. Um, I, I, just, I just don't use clear. I have TSA PreCheck. I've never had a problem waiting in line uh, more than you know 10 minutes at TSA PreCheck. So I just don't see the need to have clear, uh, but maybe you do. And if you're in a very, very busy place with TSA PreCheck lines that are extremely long, that might be something that could change your opinion. Okay, and moving on to the additional benefits like the Centurion Lounge. I really like the Centurion Lounges. I think they're, they're really neat. So I'm gonna value this at uh, say $40 because if you and a guest go twice a year, uh, maybe you know 10 bucks each time if you're gonna go get food somewhere else. Uh, I think this is a cool benefit. If anything, I just think it's neat to try different Centurion Lounges uh, you know, across the United States when you go and travel, especially if you go overseas into uh, foreign travel lounges. I think those are really neat. Haven't gotten to do that yet, but maybe one day. This goes for Priority Pass as well. There's a very long collection of uh, lounges that you can use for Priority Pass at you know, tons of airports around the United States and abroad. I'm gonna value this one at $40 as well for you and a guest for places that don't have Centurion lounges. Next one is hotel status. You do get Hilton uh, Gold and Marriott Gold. I don't really value this at all. I do have the Hilton Aspire card, so I get diamond status from that. So I'm gonna value this at zero, but I totally understand if you get value from that as well. You do get free breakfast for uh, both of those. So that could be useful if that's something that uh, you do when you stay at those properties. Another recent benefit that America Express did offer is uh, cell phone protection. Um, there's a uh, deductible of $50, and then it, you can submit a claim up to uh, $800 at uh, twice a year, which I think is a pretty good deal. You do have to put your, your spend on there. Um, my biggest complaint with this is it does not work for prepaid phones. I usually only get prepaid phones, so Unfortunately, this isn't really a benefit for me because you know I get my phone through work and they pay for it and it has to be prepaid. So I'm not a huge fan. You can't just pay for the service. Uh, you have to actually have a cell phone plan um, that is you're paying a monthly fee uh, for the phone itself, not just the service. So unfortunately, this isn't really useful for me, but again, I understand that your mileage may vary. So now wrapping up the video, I get around $90 worth of value having this card. Uh, there are some other benefits I didn't talk about, like uh, being able to go into Delta lounges, I think are really cool. I end up going to Delta lounges more than any of the other ones. So I do like that benefit. I didn't even factor any of the spend that you get with this card. So you do get 5X back on uh, prepaid hotels and 5X back on airline tickets booked directly with the merchant. I would like to see this spend increase. I would like to see this maybe more of like a, an every do everything card. I know that American Express doesn't want to uh, cannibalize their own credit card lineup. So obviously they don't really want to add a whole bunch of benefits to make you cancel other cards that they may have. They want you to have more cards because it's more swipes and more annual fees that you're paying. So I will be keeping this card 
Uh, I will try for a retention offer. I currently do have two American Express Platinum cards. I have the regular one and then the Charles Schwab. I had around 350,000 points uh, that I just cashed out. You can watch that video below, I'll link it. If you guys found this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button and like this video. Like I said, uh, if you do want to leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys are doing with this card. Will you be keeping it? Will you be canceling? Let me know down below. Thanks again so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time.